Uh, so hi, I'm Casey West. Uh, so we're going to talk about writing jQuery plugins. Um, within the next 15-20 uh, minutes, you, you guys will have enough knowledge to uh, to get started on jQuery plugins. Uh, how many folks are using jQuery now? Okay, just a couple. Um, so how many folks have JavaScript experience? And it use some other framework uh, other than jQuery? Okay. So uh, I'm not going to, uh, this isn't a primer on, on jQuery itself, so I'll definitely be skipping ahead. Um, almost all my slides are code, so we're just diving right in. Um, I do have an a fully functional example, and I'm going to be uh, uploading that along with the slides to the website uh, this afternoon, so you guys can have at it. Um, so uh, let's just get started. So uh, the first thing that we need to do uh, when we're running jQuery is to understand uh, what it does inside of your um, your JavaScript area. Uh, basically, you know, it gives you a jQuery func uh, function, um, a variable, and also uh, aliases that to the dollar variable, uh, which is a pretty popular thing in JavaScript. Um, you can't always rely on the dollar variable, so this sort of idiom is a, is a best practice here for um, being able to use the dollar shortcut, but ensuring that you're uh, assigning it directly from jQuery. What we're doing is uh, you know, just making an anonymous function that takes the one argument and uh, calling it immediately with the jQuery um, variable. Um, so next, uh, this is one way to extend jQuery. Um, that you can extend the dollar variable directly using the extend method, and uh, you just give it a hash. You know the name of the function that you intend to add uh, to jQuery, and then the function itself. So this is a simple example that extends uh, the jQuery object itself, which is slightly different than extending uh, the selectors, uh, the methods that you can run on, on selectors. Um, so for this, uh, you know, to run it, you just use uh, $.do important work. Um, I'm not going to focus on this type of plugin. I'm going to focus on plugins that operate on selectors instead. Um, but if you want to use it, you know, you just need to know that you extend the dollar variable directly. Um, if, when you want to extend the selector, uh, you use $.fn and you extend it in the same way with the extend method, and you can you can provide your own uh, functions inside of here uh, as your jQuery plugin. So in this case, we're going to uh, write a little plugin that um, for any given for any given uh, element, it's going to make it appear to rise off of the web page and then also uh, fall back down. Um, so it's a little uh, visual effect. And when you want to use these, uh, you just go ahead and uh, use the jQuery selector syntax. You can select, um, you know, using using IDs and uh, classes and a bunch of other uh, sort of meta contexts. Uh, the jQuery documentation is really good at docs.jQuery.org um, for understanding selectors. Um, that's one thing to keep in mind when you're writing a plugin, is that the methods that you run uh, may be invoked on multiple um, multiple elements, although uh, you know even if you originally expected to to just run on one, so you have to come in with the understanding that um, the selector that's used may select multiple elements and send that into your your plugin, and we'll see uh, how to deal with that later. So the first two examples here are on a single element with one ID, and the the, the other two are for um, you know a class name callouts. Anything that would have that class would be selected and we would make it rise and then fall. Um, so to get ready uh, to run selectors, um, what we want to do is, again, wrap our, wrap our uh, document.ready call inside of this little anonymous function. Um, I like to uh, do it pretty consistently just to make sure that uh, everything stays sane and we're actually getting the right dollar variable. Um, document.ready is an event that you can bind to, and you bind to it by passing a function to ready. And then inside of that, uh, any of the instructions inside of that function will be called um, when the DOM, the DOM is fully loaded, uh, which is what we need to do, especially if we're running on you know, selectors. Um, so here's an example of setting up, um, setting up a click event that's going to use our jQuery plugin. So in this case, uh, we look for a link inside of a callout that has a class name Arise, and when it's clicked, we would prevent the default behavior, whatever it would be, and then traverse up the tree to find our parent callout and call Rise on it to do the actual function. 
Um, so the next thing that we want to look at is uh, calling the rise function. Typically, uh, for jQuery plugins, it's a good idea to accept a hash of options. And so in this case, we're, gonna, uh, we're going to be able to specify the elevation. Um, so if we make it rise by 10, 10% uh, is what that means, uh, then this is, this is the way that it would be invoked using a, a JavaScript hash. So let's look at the implementation. Um, so the implementation of rise here, uh, here's an example uh, to get started and a way to handle the, the options. This is a common idiom for jQuery plugins where you accept a hash of options and you define the, your default list. Uh, it's also handy if you know, people are going to read your source code to, to be able to see what all the options are. Um, so in this case, we're going to allow you to uh, select an elevation percentage uh, and the speed that the element rises off of the page. And then we'll also allow for an on-complete um, uh, event to be fired. And we will initially define it to null, meaning there, there is none. And then the last line there uh, is uh, var o equals uh, you know, dollar extend. And what we're doing is we're extending the defaults with the options and getting a new hash. So uh, you know, for whatever uh, options you've defined as the user, uh, they override the defaults. And then we have o. And now we can, uh, we can plug it in. So this is the, the real trick. Inside of every, um, uh, excuse me, inside of every job, uh, plugin that you write, this is a, a special uh, variable. And it's defined as the, uh, the actual selector used. And that selector, again, may have multiple elements. So what you want to do is iterate over those elements and uh, bind uh, iterate over the elements and um, do the work that you want to do inside of your plugin for each of those elements. So in this case, we're using this dot each, and uh, what we're doing here is we're just going to set a background color. So inside of each, um, every this is the DOM element that's been uh, selected. So you know you're iterating over each of the elements in the selection. This is actually the current element, and you can operate on them this way. Um, so uh, this is a more complete example of what we're doing here uh, for this particular uh, plugin, where uh, we're gonna I'm going to define element equal to this. And what I do there, by the way, um, I like to use the uh, uh, the dollar sign to prefix any uh, variable that I know is a jQuery selector inside of my my plugins. Um, not a lot of jQuery folks uh, necessarily like doing that because. They think that sigils are dead, but it really helps me uh, personally know uh, at a glance what is a jQuery selector and what's just some other variable. Uh, so that's um, a common thing that I'll be doing uh, in these slides. Uh, the next thing we need to do is set the uh, set up the scale based on the elevation, and we'll set on uh, set up a drop shadow, the blurring and the alpha, depending on uh, depending on the elevation as well. And then we're just going to set some, some style sheets. Uh, in this case, I'm using uh, CSS3 uh, transition and transform uh, style sheets that are available in WebKit uh, just to make it uh, easy on myself. Um, then finally, after, uh, after the CSS is completed, then uh, if there's an oncomplete handler, we'll go ahead and uh, fire it. And we'll pass in uh, the element that is currently being operated on. Um, so that we can do some, some stuff afterward. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at uh, the HTML for a page that we would use this on. So in this case, there's a, a div with a class callout. Um, I, uh, in, in an attempt to strive for uh, unobtrusiveness, what I decided to do is give it an ID of important, and uh, then the link that you see in the paragraph at the end, uh, the href goes directly to important. We'll use that later. And its class is rise. Um, and uh, the next thing that we want to do is, uh, in our JavaScript, this would be you know your application JavaScript that you write outside of the plugin. Um, we'll set up a click event. Uh, we'll do a couple of things right off the bat with that event. Uh, the function that you that you bind gets the event uh, object in. We'll prevent the default behavior and then uh, stop the immediate propagation. 
and that makes sure that the link doesn't actually get triggered. It also means that uh, your uh, your URL doesn't get changed with a, a hashtag. Um, then finally, uh, we'll find out what the callout is by getting our the href attribute of the link, and uh, we'll go ahead and call rise from our plugin on that callout. Um, remember, the href attribute is set to the ID important hash important. So uh, what we'll do is make a jQuery selector out of that, and then of course uh, call rise. Um, but we probably don't want to just call rise. We'll set some options here. We'll set the elevation uh, to 10, and we'll change the speed to be one second. Um, and we will also set an on-complete handler. This is a little bit, uh, a little, a lot of code, I guess. Um, so the first thing that we're doing uh, in our on-complete handler is we're going to uh, take the call out and prepend a link to it. That's uh, the selector with the A tags in it. Uh, we'll hide that link and let it fade in, which is a nice visual cue, and we'll add the class fall. Then we'll add a click handler that will call the fall uh, method from our plugin. And when that's completed, it'll remove the link from the uh, from the callout. And we'll see we'll see this uh, work here in a second. Um, and I just added the uh, the comments there so that it's clear because um, you can get a lot of nesting in your jQuery code, so sometimes it, it gets a little complicated to read. Um, we can watch it happen here um, and also see the full sources. Oh. I have to do it this way. Oh, I know what I have to do. Sorry, guys. Boom. Okay, so uh, we've got our H1 here at the top and a call out with uh, inside of the yellow box. And when we click the link, uh, it'll do this and add the uh, add the, the uh, fall link over here that will send it back down. Uh, <coughs> so let's go ahead and look at the uh, the full JavaScript here. Um, so separating your code out, you know, you've got uh, one file that's the plugin and one file that's your actual application code that's tying everything together. So your actual application code here uh, is going to uh, wait until the DOM is ready, then uh, set up the click event, and do, uh, go ahead and stop the, the default behavior again. Um, set up the href uh, to find the callout, and then uh, when uh, so when it's clicked, the callout will rise based on the elevation and speed, and then whenever the rise is finished, we'll go ahead and add the uh, the little icon that lets us uh, send it back down to the screen. Um, and uh, the plugin itself has uh, rise here. Now, taking a look at some of the I've got a pointer. Some of the um, the good idioms here. Um, we're using uh, fn.extend to add to uh, add our functions to jQuery selectors. And we're setting up a default set of options here uh, and, and extending it with the options that the user would, would send in. And then we're iterating over uh, each of the elements that are in the selector uh, that you use to call rise. Uh, that iterator is, is, is very important. Then, uh, you know, this is the, the actual work, but basically that just sets up the classes to, to make it look like it. Uh, or the style sheets to make it look like it rises up off the page. And um, fall is kind of similar. Uh, so we have an on-complete here. Um, fall is kind of similar in that uh, it does the same thing. It just uh, ends up uh, setting everything back down with an elevation of zero and a default speed. Um, but it has the same elements, a default set of options that get extended by the user supplied options. And we iterate over all of the uh, elements in the current selector in order to do our work. Um, so, you know, a couple of things there, uh, just to keep in mind, is that you can't uh, assume that you'll have just one element in your selector. 
um, when you're writing a plugin for you know the wild. If you if you do expect that you will only run your plugin with uh, one very specific element at a time, I'd recommend uh, just being very careful. Uh, the selector that you get passed in will have a length, and if it's you know greater than one, then you may want to throw an exception or uh, just uh, just throw away the rest of them. Um, let's see, what else do we need to remember? Uh, yes, um, the other thing is that uh, when you're when you're writing a plugin, it's a good idea to uh, make more things options than less. Uh, you know, just make it configurable, just like you're writing your modules, uh, and also. Um, Make sure that you provide uh, some reasonable hooks. Um, on complete hooks are pretty pretty popular. Um, anytime you know there's a there's an, a part of your plugin that's in operation that you might want to let someone uh, hook into, just go ahead and add a hook in there. And, th and this is a you know simple way to do that, where you can just check for the existence of the hook and, and then call it if it's there. Um, do we have any uh, any questions? <clears throat> in general, about jQuery plugins, has anyone tried to write one before? Okay, um, okay. I would recommend also, um, just like just like when you're writing your server side code uh, and you <coughs> keep things modular, that it's a good idea if you happen to be running a web app uh, to consider making as much of it as you can a plugin instead of just writing a long mess of. Uh, of JavaScript, you know, in, in one or a couple of files that are just a series of, of functions, I would recommend uh, trying to write jQuery plugins. Uh, and you know, go to docs.jQuery.com or .org for uh, for complete docs on everything you can do with jQuery. Uh, so, well, thanks. I guess I went kind of fast. <laughs>